If you like looping or loop artists, or you're a loop artist yourself, or you're thinking about getting into looping, then welcome to my channel. My name is JP, and this is How Do You Loop? In these series of interviews, I dive into the minds of different loop artists from different genres around the world. We ask them, why do you loop? What do you use to loop? More importantly, how do you use that equipment? Ladies and gentlemen, it's Mr. John Wynn here. Hooray! There he is. Whoa, look at the guns. <laughs> It's for you, John. Oh, thanks. Thanks very much. That's awesome. <laughs> for those of you who don't know who John Wynn is, John Wynn, can you please describe yourself and what you do and who you are? My name is John Wynn. I'm uh, almost 38. Uh, I'm a live looper. One, two, three, drop! Like a lot of us watching this channel, um, I've been doing it roughly since 2014. 15-ish, that's when I first bought a loop station. And ever since then I've been live gigging and, and now I just want to see what I can do on YouTube and edit a few videos and see what we can put up there and obviously following your advice and your tricks and tips. Been, uh... <laughs> oh, stop. It's not about me. Um, that's cool. Thank you, John. Describe to me why you decided back then in whenever it was, 2015, 14, 15, you decided I'm going to use a loop pedal. It was it was totally by accident. I wanted to gig. I had a, I had a long time off playing with bands and gigs uh, when my, my daughter was very young. And then I thought, I want to get out gigging. So I started getting some backing tracks together. So it's like playing along to backing tracks or playing acoustically and singing. And then just by accident, I was on YouTube. And I come across, a, I think it's a very famous video now, of Randolph Ariola. Yeah. And he's playing with or without me. And I thought, what the hell is this? It, it was... It was cool it blew my mind it was with or without you by you too as well great track and then um from then i just i just started exploring different videos watching the likes of brian fitty as well does like a lot of r and b and funk and i thought that's cool and then i started like um getting out and looking at other artists gigging around the area seeing um don't know if you remember a guy called kenny and the energy yeah he, yeah i know yeah, kenny he, yeah he had a he had like a guitar and ukulele kind of hybrid thing and he was yes. making like whistling noise and stuff you know very artistic and very funny with his act on stage as well don't you know man loco and then i noticed uh samwise <laughs> uh, sam jones friend of ours i noticed that he was using a loop station i thought right okay this is what i've got to do it's what i've got to get into so then i just started looking at videos and i would like sit down with a um, with a writing pad and i'd uh, i'd basically draw out a loop pedal and all the different instruments that go into it and out of it and how right. it separates different sounds and yeah right. it was just a lot of homework before i actually bought the loop pedal itself so more but like the rig that, more like the what like the, the actual rig. yeah yeah definitely look, looking at the rig sorts of things i mean right. my uh okay. i sent me some pictures of my first rig um the first thing that i had was a digitech stereo jam man loop pedal uh, yeah, yeah 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 the blue one yeah and i got on uh, i think it was an rc2 yeah. loop pedal it's a single one and mm -hmm. I linked them both together. But also what I've done as well, I thought I want to take a live drum kit out with me. So right. I started out an electro drum kit, yeah. plugging that into the auxiliary. Then I thought I want to play a bass guitar and I want all <laughs> of going through a massive bass amp behind me. So I bought this 300 watt Ashdown bass amp and it was taking me like an hour and 20 minutes this this thing up and I was just by the time I got on stage I was just sweating I was exhausted I wanted to go home so <laughs> it was just it was equipment everywhere it was just it was chaos and then I thought yeah I can't keep this up so then um, gradually I started um, getting rid of some of the pedals reducing some of the amplifiers taught myself how to beatbox as well so I thought yeah the drum kit can go there's no need for me to bring that out to learn how to beatbox yeah yeah, uh, and then yeah, just uh, kept on swapping and changing a few things until I got the the RC three hundred, and then right. alongside that I got the the Roland GR fifty five, like a bass guitar out of me and a bass amp and a guitar amp. So well, yeah, yeah. got get all the sounds in one unit, link them both together, and off I go. It's funny because you literally took the um, the the phrase one man band <laughs> and took every that's instrument it. with you. Uh, <laughs> that's really funny. That's the cool. The where the Aerosmith was playing. No, I know this from your setup anyway because we've had many conversations about it. But um, the GR fifty five can kind of becomes like the the sort of staple of your looping. The other thing as well is that you made a fundamental switch um, from your looping. You kind of went away from the 
you know, the Katie Tunstall and then Ed Sheeran lark, and you changed over to electric. So was that because you wanted the band element and you went to electric guitar because you said you started with an acoustic? That was, uh, I'm a massive Nile Rodgers fan. I, I always loved this style of playing, even since I was a kid. So for me, it was always going to be a Fender Strat as soon as I had the money to buy one. So that was uh, that was simply why i done that. And I love funk music. I love disco. I just love that old school feel to it. And yeah. that's just what I wanted to do uh, with my loops just to be a little bit different and old school disco vibey, you know. If anyone has ever seen John play live, uh, if you're in the Northwest area, check uh, of the UK, check John out because um, there is definitely a funk dance vibe to your nights. So with that in mind, with the tr with the tracks that you do in sort of pubs and clubs when you're playing covers, how do you structure the loops? First of all, I always um, set one, set two is always different. So set one, I loop everything. Everything gets looped. The beatboxing, um, I always start off with the, off with the beat. Um, you know, just some phrases where it's a you know bouncing cat. Yeah. Always start off with that, get a bit of a groove going, but also get talking to people as well. You know, I'm there to basically, you know, make sure the bar or the venue is successful. Make sure, you know, they're making money behind the bar. Everyone's having a good time. Come on, Goldilocks. Not you, Goldilocks. That's Goldilocks. Get that sweet ass up here right now. Okay, give your drink to someone. Hey, you'll get your turn. So while this is building, I'm, I'm talking to people, I'm engaged in it. Is it anyone's birthday? Is anyone celebrating anything? Uh, has anyone got divorced? You know, we can celebrate that. Uh, absolutely anything. Just to engage with the whole room. Um, always start off with something like that. Get everyone warmed up. And yeah. then when we go into um, set two, I always use preset drum beats. Right, okay. I think by then, everyone's a little bit drunk. Everyone's a little bit merry and wants to party and dance. And they don't want to yeah. hear me speak down a microphone plus as well it's really noisy so i always have that danger of that sound of the bar bleeding into the microphone and right. coming back up again while i'm beatboxing so that's why i tend to use the preset drum beats so your preset drum beats are still are they beatboxing but from you've done from home or are the rhythms that are coming out of the rc 300 or 600 or whatever you're using no no i went completely different um i've used a range of different beats which have um i have used like something from apple loops you know, oh, yeah. put a few together from there and then I'll just basically you know whether it's on the iPad or the computer the headphone jack straight into the auxiliary input into the RC right. and press record so the, so the beat so the beat is playing live from the iPad and you're recording it live in the moment like is that what you're saying uh, I've actually recorded a few measures to the RC 300 that I was using and it's yeah. actually saved so you're using the memories you're using the memories in the 300 to kind of like each memory is a song is that what you're doing yeah just to store those beats fantastic okay cool that's brilliant so of course obviously by doing that you're as you said everyone wants to get up and dance and you're kind of reducing the amount of time uh, it takes to build up the track yeah, yeah. Definitely. Cool. definitely i think fantastic. that's quite important especially in those later sets give the interest of everyone keep them moving so let's talk gear um, we kn we no not we me I I know that you use the RC three hundred and you're using the GR fifty five as we've explained. Yeah. But you had something happen to your GR fifty five. Do you want to tell the audience what happened? Yeah, it still hurts, John. It still hurts. It was a Christmas party gig in our local area, and okay. taking a break, I left the playlist playing in between sets. I turn around and I heard this crash somebody had um i bumped into my speakers knocked them over uh i noticed my uh, my macbook here that was playing all the backing tracks from you know for the uh, karaoke so not karaoke djing yeah. see it, it guard me that much i can't even get my words out my guitar had fallen over my fender strat so that's oh. your the guitar um and i'm looking around for, oh, looks okay and then i look down and then there's the screen of the gr55 just blinking blue and it's all cracked and smashed like yeah i don't want to 
Play on your channel. I, I don't. I don't want to. I don't want to swear anything there. But yeah, yeah, that's all right. Lo lots of lots of four-letter words were said about. Indeed. Too many. Far too many. Um, I've been. I still haven't got it repaired. Right. And I, I need to really get it repaired. The. Um, but now I'm gigging blind. I can't see what effect I'm on. But luckily, I mean, I never really looked at it anyway. I just used the dials on the GK3 pickup. My delay is like five up. Um, my my bass guitar is one over. My my yeah. main guitar is five down, and and that's how a gig. So you are literally gigging with a mind map. That's cool. Um, for all the people who turn around and go, this screen isn't big enough. I need a touch screen or this, that, and the other. John Wynn here, ladies and gentlemen, is gigging blind, uh, knowing yeah. exactly where his presets are by going five up, one across, three down, uh, and for a full house, uh, he's going to get his uh, screen repaired. So for now, um, you've kind of moved over to a paddle that's prior to the GR55, right? Yeah, just for the new uh, for the new setup. Um, so it's a Boss GP10. Okay. Uh, I will be using that until I get the GR fifty five repaired or replace okay. it. Right. So it's it's a it's an interim pedal at the moment. How are you finding it? It's pretty good. It took me a long time to um to kind of like match the effects to the GR fifty five. I had to plug both of them in and play and strum and make sure the settings were that they're not quite there. But right. They're, here is it going to get? In all honesty, the GR fifty five uh, is just a more powerful pedal. It's 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 yeah. far superior. The bass tone that I have in particular, I mean, everyone comments on that bass tone. It's it's beefy, it's got a punch, it's got a little bit of a growl to it as well. Yeah, yeah. That's something I'm definitely trying to replicate at the moment. It's more than any other effect is that bass. Just to get that across on the PA, just to get it like pushing through the yeah. audience, yeah? Yeah, 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 fair enough. Yeah. So it's an interim pedal. So obviously, if you get the GR55 either replaced or repaired, and once you, if you get the GR55, you'll put that back in and take the GP10 out. Yeah, definitely, just in case someone breaks it again. So. Yeah, so you've got it. <laughs> well, hopefully. Oh, God, hopefully not. Wow. <laughs> oh, imagine having two. G no, I don't even want to say it. No, forget it. I'm not saying that. I'm not cursing. I'm not cursing. I'm not doing commentators' curse, as it were. The um, amount of stuff that damaged. I mean, the the, uh, the case that I've got, you know, the rifle case where I've put all my effects pedals. The amount of times I've had to rivet that back together just because someone's fallen over it. What this means, John, is basically there is a there is a massive need for pubs and clubs to have a dedicated stage. Some British pubs are old pubs. You're stuck in the corner and yeah. you, you just have to do with what you do with. Again, when you have a look at John's channel and have a look at how he plays with the RC300, he, he just mentioned it there and didn't use a pedal board or a flight case. We used a rifle case. Talk to me about the rifle case. It was the only thing long enough and deep enough to get the RC300, the GR55, and the vocalist effect pedal that I was using. <laughs> and it gave me Brilliant. a place to plug everything in. And I just wanted something simple. After spending, as I said before, yeah. spending an hour and 20 minutes when I first started setting up, I just yeah. wanted something maybe five minutes, plonk it on the floor, you know, left and right channel out, microphone in, guitar in, plug in, play, off you go. Brilliant. So yeah, so that was the only thing long enough. So if obviously the moral of the story is, if you want obviously you know the big gun arms like John's got, then buy all the speakers and take them on stage and take an hour an hour a night to set up, and you know, you'll have guns in no time. Going from a rifle case and a broken GR55, your main looper is the RC300, or it was the RC300. Yeah. So how long did you have the 300 for? Late 2015, early 2016, I want to say. And are you using it in like? this normal way of using it in like a multi-motor you got three loops going at the same time do you ever do a single mode where you like could do like a verse chorus bridge or does it depend song to song um no the way i do it is um for i use it for an example i use something i do in my second set i'll um my third song and i'll do good times by chic okay nice um funky so drum tracks go in and on track two i'll play the bass line bomb 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 I'll play that. Third nice. track is Cargo and then I Rogers. Yeah. And then I find if I switch the bass guitar off on track two, I can play Superstition by Stevie Wonder, the bass line nice. for the guitar part. Right. And also I'll play the bass line to um, oh, Burn Rubber on Me by the Gap Band. Right, okay. <laughs> that fits perfectly over that guitar part as well. I play Superstition, so I might have to rob this, but that's cool. That's a cool idea. I like that. Yeah, I'm the best mountains all the time. Do you lay out your tracks like 
track one is your drums, track two is your bass, track three yeah. is your guitar. Do you always have it in a, like in a set way? Pretty much, yeah. It depends on the song. Um, yeah. Usually, I mean, typically, if I'm doing a long train running, which you know is a is a favourite of mine to always perform. We don't love. I'll only yeah. use track one, track two, so don't use a third on that. You don't so. use all three. Yeah, depends on the track, doesn't it? Or, so, or if I'm doing it, um, end of the road, you know, boys to men, I'll use all three. So you used a harmonizer, which um, for a little while you, I saw a photograph. Well, it was actually a photograph. It was um, one of your Lotus videos. And on the kind yeah. of left-hand side, you switched your old harmonizer out for the TC Helicon Voice Live Play Electric. Uh, I've yeah. got the acoustic version, which is the black one. You've got the blue one, which is the uh, electric. So that's a fairly new pedal for you, right? Yeah, I've had it for a little while. Um, I do like the unit. Yeah. Um, it's got some great sounds on there. Uh, however, though, the only reason I put that one in there is because I was getting a little bit of um, like mains hum. Uh, the Digitech is um, it, it's great for me. It's just simple, um, you know, two part, three part harmony, yeah. and a on and off, and yeah. that, that's all I need um, really. Yeah. I mean, I'll just have like a beatbox setting, or it's like straight talk and just flat, no effects whatsoever. Yeah. Or you know, I'll hit the middle button, which is all my effects, and then that's when mm. a little bit of reverb, a little de bit of delay comes in as well. And yeah. that's all I tend to use. But I think I do like the TC Helicon. But I think for me to get to where I need to be for each song, it's going to take a lot of tap dancing, just yeah. you know. Effects effects down and so on i mean i use mine quite a lot and i have a lot of effects on mine but they're all vocal effects and then you can change it so the the guitar input is the same all the way through now it has guitar effects on as well but of course if you're using a gr55 or the gp10 you're probably yep. just going in and out right you're just you're not really using the effects for the guitar on that one in fact i have the guitar switched down there because there is like a line in yeah um, but so yeah, you, are you lining in just for the harmonies so it can pick up like the chords? Just for the right? harmonies, that's yeah. yeah. Right, 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 cool. So yeah, so the, the, it's it's a different pedal really because it's tr it's probably doing more than you need in that respect. Now the main yeah. thing right now, of course, the big change is there's two big changes. Right now you've got two pedal boards, haven't you? Because you've had the uh -huh. RC300 with the GR55 and right now you've now switched over to the RC600 with the GP10, which will soon be a new GR55, but the big one is the RC600. First of all, what do you think? What do you think about the changeover from the 300 to the 600? I, I, I love it. It's uh, it's fantastic. Um, I like that we've got more tracks to play with. Mm. I like that we can put every pedal in single mode as well, yeah, which is yeah. mm. great. And also as well, the amount of um, bars, you don't need to play as many bars uh, to create the, um, the beatbox. So yeah. on the... Uh, the RC300, you have to go, and then this will just go. Yeah. This you just spit once and press <laughs> record and basically just keep on going. So that, that's what I love about it. It just cuts down that time. If you have a look at things that the beatboxers are doing on things like the Swiss Beats channel, uh, where they're using the RC505, the tabletop one, they're literally going, and it's like like each one, each one, and, go, and then it's going boom, 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 boom. And they've only done it once. They go, and it literally will just, like, it can be so, so short, um, yeah. which is so good in that respect. The other thing I wanted to ask you, because you're a bit like me in the sense we play, like, local pubs and clubs. How have you found, like, the sound quality? Because, of course, the quality from the 300 uh, going up to the 600 is now 32-bit floating. Has that made yeah. a difference at all? Have you rooted anything? Like, you obviously, you just got a stereo out, or have you got it, like, into multi-out or anything like that at all? I've just been um, playing it with mono out because I've only used it in the house. Just got some brand-new JBLs as well, which are, they are mints. They're very powerful. Um, nice. I've not been able to gig it through that yes i think the neighbors go crazy <laughs> so we haven't yet done a gig with the 600 is that correct oh yeah okay. no i mean i've only um put that video up the other day we were put on the um the pedal toppers yes so that was a great little addition as well because that's one thing i mean i was being very picky if i said i didn't like anything about the rc600 because i like everything about it but okay. it was for that coverage of the pedal that the um yeah. 
I just wanted them a little bit bigger because, um, you know, when I'm playing, I might do a double hit, like a double start, like a start on one and a start on two at the same time, yeah. if, especially preset drum beats on there. So I want to, like, come in nice and hot with that bass line as well as the drum beat kicking in. No, I get you totally. I've done exactly the same. So I've got pedal toppers on mine. The other thing I found as well is it depends also what kind of shoes you're wearing. Um, so if you've got the little switches, um, if I've got soft sketches and I press it, the, it just goes into the actual sketches and it doesn't press the button. Um, so it depends on the sole of the feet. If you've got hard yeah. soles, it's absolutely fine. But if you've got a little bit of a softer trainer, for example, um, yeah, a pedal topper can do you wonders, uh, definitely for double tapping and things like that. That's really, really yeah. cool but i found these from watching um have you seen that guy on youtube mike love yeah oh yeah of course yeah mike love's fantastic yeah he's, he's like he's, he's in his bare feet yeah. and you know he's playing i watched this song the other day i was like bloody hell how is he doing that you're not you're he not was, talking about holiday are you where he sings all the bits you go ah, yeah see, oh ah. i will be the change i'm seeking manifest the words i'm speaking i refuse to be yeah, yeah, it's a well known yeah, looping video. It's fantastic. Birds and broken up the syllables and then sang a yeah. syllable at a time and all backwards. It's it's amazing. It's it's really cool. It's it's really cleverly um formulated that 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 one. Yeah. And it's um what's amazing is if you watch uh, the B roll, as it were, the, the the shot of the loop pedal. There's a part where he just goes, bup, 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 and he's so quick, and he knows where everything is. You can just see he's he obviously uses it a lot in that in that setup. That leads me nicely on to actually muscle memory. Um, so the question I have for you, of course, the 300 has got the expression pedal, uh, and also the start stop is in a very specific place. How have yeah. you found changing over to things like that? Yeah, I've got a little frown line here. Yeah. So prior getting the RC300, I didn't have that line. So, <laughs> so that, that appeared, that's just walking down like, what the hell am I doing, you know? And now I'm just afraid I'm going to get more wrinkles on my forehead looking down at this thing. I'm pointing down because it's actually the floor there. Pointing yeah. down at that and actually learning how to, how to use this thing. And, and again, yeah, the muscle memory, just being able to look at the audience and just know where your feet are going. Yeah. So yeah, it's going to take a little while, but you know what? It's a work in progress. I'm going to take my time with it, learn how to use it properly, and also uh, get some new songs going, and just make sure it just flows. And then the other alternative you can do, of course, if the muscle memory obviously um, kicks in too much for the 300, and you start getting multiple multiple ones like this, uh, where yeah. you're learning multiple different pedal boards, um, you could always change where the button is, because of course you can completely customize um, the th the, th the 600. So because yeah. you can customize the nine switches, is that from from what you do, is that something that's really tempting to do? Or is it just a, oh, crap, that's going to be like over there and then the next switch is going to be over there? Is that too much? You just want it to be simple and what it says, uh, what I always say, what it says on the tin or like what it's written? Or do you want to change that? Um, there's not too much you want to change. I mean, I suppose there is um, one thing I have utilized so far is the, is the mic kill switch. Don't get that bleed coming back through. But I did wonder, I was going to ask you about, is there a way of setting it up so you can actually change um, where the microphone is going? So the microphone will stay on and you can actually bring it in and out of the loop process. Yeah, I'd have to figure that out for you though. <laughs> um, it's cool to do just to be able to, to beatbox, you know, press yeah. a button and you can still talk while recording the guitar. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I don't, you know, so, that, so you want to you want to you want to what you want to have it so it's not just permanently bypassed it's bypassed once you press the button or using like yeah. an external pedal to press it yeah 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 alternatively what you would then do is inst if if you can't do it I can't think of the top of my head if you can do that but if you can't do that then of course then that comes into somewhere where you have like an A B switcher that goes in and then um, there's a guy called uh, David Shannon hello. My name's David Shannon. Who I've also interviewed on this channel, and he has an AB switcher, and then um, now uh, Carl Wachner's doing the same thing. He used to use two microphones all the time, and now yeah. he's got a, my, a one microphone in, and it goes to two places. So one goes to the house PA, and then when you switch it over, it goes into the looper. But there's some nice little pedals. There's a company called Loopy, uh, Loopy Pedal, an Australian company, and they do ones like that. Um, there's a couple of other ones in the UK, and, and some in the US as well. Have you found your perfect setup yet um be picky come on <laughs> i think just uh, just tweaking this rc 600 i think then okay. i'll find that 
FX setting. Could you do a gig with just the RC600? Like, if I took away your GR55, if I took away the GP10, if I took away the harmonizer, and you've just got the effects, which do have guitar effects, but you just right. had a 600 on stage with a microphone and a guitar lead, could you do it? I reckon I could do it. I think what I'll do is message JP and say, JP, how do I make this sound like a really good bass? <laughs> <laughs> brilliant excellent answer <laughs> i'm still tweaking my base so uh yeah no fair enough on that that's cool it would be great if, if boss or someone could come up with a great standalone bass effect just to make your guitar sound like a bass about that warble sound that you get mm -hmm. from the uh I forgot the name of the the, the octave pedal that boss does oc5 um, or the oc3 yeah, yeah it's like there is a little bit of a warble sound there especially when you start mm -hmm. playing those lower notes you know to get a yeah. decent you have to play right down the neck the, with the midi pedals you don't get that at all I, i've spoken to a couple of people who predominantly play acoustic how is that with how is an oc5 with an electric how does that how does that change i did try one out in dawson's a few years ago and there was a little bit of a warble effect there the five only came out i think was it last year um so i don't know whether they've fix that someone will let us yeah. know i'm sure um so i've never gone out and searched for one because i use voice for bass i'm boom 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 boom, boom and i do it that way so and, yeah so, that's interesting oh uh, yeah i was watching the video recently of the, the barry white effect oh yeah 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 <laughs> yeah I use that when i'm talking to ladies in the audience you know we just want to switch on hey, hey, how are you doing what is the best and what is the worst part about being a loop artist ah uh. I think the best part is you can rely on yourself. There's no there's no egos that you sometimes get in bands, not in all bands, but you sometimes do get egos where you'll get a drummer who wants to, you know, outperform someone else or a guitarist who wants to whack it right up during his leads, you know, breaks. With this, yeah. you want everything to sit perfectly within the song. You, you know, yeah. you always I always use an AM monitor, so I'm always listening to the mix, making sure um, you know, my beatbox is not too strong, you know, my my bass isn't drowning out everything. Uh, yeah. both back vocals aren't too loud when I'm recorded them. I just want everything to sit nicely. So it's total control, basically. Control freak. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> What's the worst thing? Um, the worst thing, oh, it comes down to that uh, that personal metronome thing. Um, sometimes you don't hit a pedal on time and then you've done a full loop and then you realise it's not recorded. And then about five seconds later, it'll come back and you're like, oh, to delete the whole thing and start again and uh, that that is the worst thing really it can kill the momentum a little bit have you ever had that situation where people are going they're just backing tracks all the time <laughs> you, you'll get like a, i think it's great when another musician comes along because they can mm. see what you're doing especially if you're doing like the mashups or like i said before you know taking you know a different bass line and putting it over something else then bringing the original bass line back in and mm. um, just meeting and talking to people after a show who appreciate that like oh that was pretty good, that. But yeah, the majority of people are just out for a good time. They just want to dance. Um, they don't. Some people just don't understand it. But mm. it's fine. I'm up there. I'm enjoying myself, and I enjoy the process, and you know, I'm having a good time. So your channel now. Let's move over to your YouTube channel. Obviously, you've had your channel for quite a couple of years, but you've kind of only just started to do things a little bit more frequently. Um, yeah. So have a look. Obviously, we've got the channel John Wynn, uh, and it is just your name, which is fantastic. And obviously, you're kind of going on your journey with the RC600 so far. Um, yeah. Where do you see your channel in a year's time? Hopefully, really successful. Um... I'm going to keep on putting songs up. I'm going to keep on putting yeah. a few little tutorials and how I build my song up. And the thing we really want to do is um, I want to put my full set list on cool. and just show people how to how to perform those songs. Things that go down really well in venues, uh, things that I've had success with. Um, and just put the good stuff on, really, and put a few live gigs up there as well, live videos. Yeah, just, nice. just share share the knowledge so obviously uh for my audience of course who know me full and well when all my songs start to change uh, and become very very much like john's <laughs> you'll know why uh because i've learned all his tricks um so <laughs> you're predominantly a performer and and uh uh, an entertainer um, when you're doing sort of live stuff and you're doing covers are you uh, are you going to be venturing out into your own stuff i'd love to I've written a few songs, um, but yeah, I think it's something I definitely want to explore. All right, I tell you what, yeah, let's do a gigging thing, like where people can book you. Uh, yeah, um, mainly people get me through Facebook. Um, I'm yet to get a website, so it's just John Wynn Live on Facebook or on Instagram. It's my name backwards uh, at Win John, which is kind of annoying because when I tell people that they don't know how to spell my surname. 
It's W Y double N. So they just go W Y N. W Y N. I can't find it. <laughs> um, cool so obviously if you want to book John uh, for a real live gig or maybe a virtual one uh, if you're in a different country and you wish, or you just want to pay for John to fly out to where you are and perform go and check out his stuff and obviously give John a shout that would be fantastic so for those who haven't yet go and check out John's uh, channel he's obviously um, just at this point just going over 100 subscribers which it's 103 now 103 there you go so we're going to get you even more we're going to get you even more it's a journey that I, I i really really wish you the best of luck with mate because it is um you've got a great great talent and also you've got a great personality and i think uh, you would be an absolute legend on youtube so um more videos to come please 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 that's all i'd say i'll, I'll keep them coming Fantastic, fantastic, cool. Now, a couple of things before I go. Don't forget to pick up your How Do You Look t-shirt or hoodie. I'll put that discount code on the screen now. And it's gone. The link for picking up the t-shirt is in the description box below. As always, if you have found the content of this video useful, then please give it a thumbs up. It helps me, but it helps push this video out to other people who might want to watch it. Subscribe to the channel, click the bell, and then you'll know when the next video goes live. Thank you very much for watching, and we'll see you on the next one.